Okay, we're live. Oh, wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, there we go. Okay. So that did not work Let's the first time. <laughs> so I start, we started on my page and for some reason we could not get Kim on. So we're going to go live here and then I'm going to post it on my page. And I'm sorry to anybody who was trying to watch and couldn't because I left the page and deleted the live, but it's going to get up as a video. <laughs> so um, what I was saying is that we are reading a new book this month in book club and it's called Mindset by Carol S. Dweck. It's a really good book. And I had read it once before and um, I was excited to read it again because I knew that I would have a very different perspective mm -hmm. than I did last time. And I did. It was really, I'm not, I don't want to skip to the part that really impacted me the most. I just want to talk about it a little bit for a second and just explain like, so Mindset is really just a belief about, you know, and it's either we either have a very limiting belief about our capabilities or an expansive one. And people with a fixed mindset believe that, you know, related to t intelligence, personal qualities, like who you, your personality, who you are, your abilities, your skill sets, like being athletic or not, that like you're just born who you are. You can't really change it. You can't become smarter or more athletic or change things you don't really like about yourself. And then people with a growth mindset believe that they can substantially change who they are as a person, increase their skills by practicing hard enough, and that, you know, they can even become smarter. And so this, she figured this out by studying failure. And one of the big things was how people respond to failure. And so people with a fixed mindset mm -hmm. respond like they take it personally. It's like, you know, I'm a failure. I'm no good. I can't be better. They get, you know, they're just, they feel very stuck. But a person who mm -hmm. has a um, growth mindset is going to think about it like, oh, well, this is just learning. I'm learning how not to do it. I'm, you know, I'm going to learn the right way to do it to get the results that they want. And they, they feel distress about it too. It's just that they don't get stuck there. They feel like they can change it. And the big thing, this was the part that really impacted me the most because I can see myself in both of these is the response to that mm -hmm. failure, which is, somebody with a fixed mindset is just going to really do nothing to grow or change. They're going to, you know, lay in bed, pout about it, go eat something, go drink, just do things that are going to really keep them the same and show them that they really can't change. While a person with a growth mindset is going to take direct action to fix it. Like they're going to study more. They're going to work at whatever the skill is harder. They're going to just tackle that obstacle and they're going to change it. And so, you know, I could totally see like thinking about business and the approach that I've taken. There's been times where I'm like, oh God, I'm never going to be able to do this. Let me just go watch Netflix for, you know, a couple of days and then I'll try again. <laughs> and there's times where I'm like, no, okay. Like I just have to do it different and I'm going to get the results that I want. And those are the times that I learn and grow and move faster. So mm -hmm. it's just interesting how in one person we can have both of those qualities, but it's just about for me taking that growth mindset response more often than the fixed mindset response that produces different results. I think because I, I've read this book before um, and I think towards the end, she talks about how a lot of us have both. We have both mindsets going on. Mm -hmm. um, part of that, and I don't, this is not what Dr. Dweck says, this is what Kimberly Jarman says. 
I think part of that is if you're an American, I will not speak for other countries. I'm not, wasn't raised there. Um, it is embedded in our cultural fiber, this fixed mindset. We're, we're, we're a driven society of high achievers and we've created this societal agreement that Einstein was a born genius, Kim wasn't right um and that talent i see it so much when i used to own a crossfit gym parents would really believe that their kid had a special gift like they were an exceptional t-ball player so they were very gifted and they were one day going to go to play baseball in college there wasn't this connection that um maybe my kid just it's foundation was a little, it was laid with a little bit more athleticism, but if my kid doesn't put in the time, it, that talent isn't going to get them there, right? So I think part of it is we're working against cultural education, that talent is the fixed growth mindset, that talent is born and innate in us and you either have it or you don't. Yeah. Right, and you see it in like the, I don't know how you guys did it, but when I was in elementary school, they would test us, you know, those standardized tests. And how do you test it on those standardized tests determined whether you went into the gifted or talented program? Again, that's affirming the fixed mindset. If I produced well on a test and I'm gifted naturally, now I get to go instead of saying like, all of you kids are capable giving the right amount of rep, we call them reps in the coaching world. The athlete athletic coaching world right. home rep kids like getting enough reps in you all can be capable of being in the gifted and talented program yeah i was as you were talking thinking about how well two different things one how the kid who is labeled as athletic if they're struggling in school then they kind of get a pass and they're pushed through instead of being taught that you know, and you just focus on the athlete part of them instead of developing them as a whole person. And then mm -hmm. the other part of that is like when I was in high school, I went to school in New York and we had like, it wasn't called gifted and talented. I don't think we had something like that. If we did, I didn't know about it, but <laughs> we had like a regents program well enough. where we had like higher expectations. Basically, we had to meet these goals and take these state standardized tests to be able to graduate if we wanted to be in this program. And I remember one day I was in this class and I had to stay behind for something. So there was another class that came in after me that was not a regents class. And the teacher was the same teacher, but she had totally different expectations for these kids that were not in, like the kids, they're running around just acting crazy. We were not allowed to act that way. It was just this totally different standard instead of lifting them up, you know, and trying to teach that to them. I think school is just really, that's part of it. Like your pass or fail, not like you're halfway there. All I got to do is learn 50% more and you're hundred percent there. It's like, no, you just failed. Yeah, and you know, my ex-husband was a college football coach and I spent several years, I mean, I was a college athlete and, my, and I was an academic advisor for college athletes. And here's another great example for athletes and fixed mindset, right? So these exceptional athletes that have made it to the D1 college level, right? Have had this stigma, you're an athlete, therefore you're not smart. The bar is high for your athletic performance, but we're going to lower that bar for your academic performance. Mm -hmm. And so that belief that's been propagated through junior high, high school, now into college, right? They have this belief about them. I'm an athlete first and education is not as easy for me. Not yeah. all of them. I'm not blanketing yet, but we've already put them in this box. And when they get to higher ed, when they get to that college level, they have a whole new set of expectations. You're an athlete, which means you're an employee of the university, period. As an employee of the university, you will show up and you will put your time in and we will pay you through a scholarship. But we also expect you to perform well in the classroom. And if you don't, NCAA will not let you play. 
So then it's this whole new paradigm for them. Like what? I work more than full time now as an athlete and I have to do well in the classroom, but I've been told that classroom doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not that great. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a disservice. And then like, I really, I had to change into a more growth mindset in college because I was one of those kids who could sit in school and listen and never have to study and still make good grades. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in college, no. but it took me a minute to figure out what the problem was. Like at first I did have that fixed mindset of, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I have what it takes. And then I had to, you know, open up to, I just need to study. <laughs> I got to put in some work here. It's a little bit different than high school. And so that was that kind of first experience I really remember of having to grow and expand and see that I actually was in control, but it still didn't sink in, even though towards the end of college, I started seeing like that my brain really had changed, that I was a better problem solver, that I actually was good at math because I believe that I wasn't. So I quit trying it all in like sixth grade. And then here I'm going to get an accounting degree. So I've got to go take all this math again to get back up to speed, which I did learn, but I still didn't understand this concept. Like right. had I understood it then it was like, I was having growth and changing, but still having a little bit of a belief that I was limited or a lot of a belief mm -hmm. that I was limited as to how far I could take that. I absolutely had a fixed mindset up until I read this book a, a year ago, two years ago. Like, and it's just like the most painful belief system to believe that you're only born with so much intelligence, so much talent, so much capability, so much, so you only have the ability to be so successful or make a certain amount of money, like living underneath that ceiling. And just feeling like, okay, well, I just have to prove that at least I'm like a, a little bit above average and where I'm gifted at. And, and going back to the athlete, if you're an athlete, like I am like, that shit does not matter out in the real world. It's like, I'm 40. No one cares about my athletic performance. Like, I guess I'm just a failure and everything else for the rest of my life because I'm, I'm under the ceiling there's nowhere else for me to go. Yeah. Yeah. And that does not feel good. And there's no, I think I didn't have the drive to learn new things or like, I just have such a drive now that I know like coaching opened that up for me with, I still didn't really know what a growth mindset was. I was just being taught it until I read the book and I had the yeah. actual words for it, but it opened yeah. me up to learning new things and trying new things and pushing myself. It, I just didn't before. Cause I really, it just seemed like to me, some people were born with the ability to do certain things and others weren't. And if it was hard that it just meant that I couldn't do it. And for the other people, it must be easy for them. And realizing like, wait, it can be hard and I can be struggling and I can still accomplish this. Yeah. Like yeah. I'd still be working for somebody else and would have never been able to start my own business or because I wouldn't have believed that I could do it because I didn't know how, right? Like I couldn't read, you know, a bunch of books and just get out there and do it. It's just, something that I wish was taught in school, like everything else. Right. Right. Well, it's you like, um, I, I had a thought, what was it? I mean, it's just this, so we have, we both know as coaches, if you have a belief or a mindset, whatever you want to call it, your brain is then going to spend its day looking for evidence to prove that belief is true. If you believe that you're only born with so much talent, so much intelligence, your brain is going to spend its day proving that's true. So you just spend your life gathering more and more evidence to see, oh, well, that doctor, like they were smarter than me and better in science. 
and it was easy for them. And that's why they got to be a doctor. Yeah. You yeah. don't think about how many hours they spent studying. No, we just automatically assume. And I saw so many of my students when I was doing a rising, like they would come out of high school and go into college and like had to study. Therefore, the meaning they created around that is that I'm not smart enough. The kids that don't have to study in the sciences and science and math aren't hard for them. They are the ones that are going to be the doctors. Yeah. And, and being an adult now, like I, I do not want to hire a doctor that did not have to study. <laughs> like you need to be learning all the time. <laughs> like, right. You know, but it's just this like vicious cycle. I you have this belief, you gather evidence and you keep seeing more and more of it. And so to be like, wait, what if work is just, it's all an even playing field. And what if work is what separates us? Those who just continue to work and put in the reps and get where they want to go. And then the rest of us, we do the same thing in business. I, mean, I know because you and I have so many conversations that it's hard. We're not Brooke Castillo yet. So it's like, oh my, my brain offers up, like you don't have what it takes. Like it almost thinks like it should be easy and clients should just come find me daily and if they don't and if I don't post one post and don't get so many comments in a, a client then I'm not doing it right therefore I don't have what it takes yeah I think that that's probably one of the biggest like starting a business will definitely bring all of that stuff up to be challenged and if you don't have don't develop a growth mindset in that process then you quit i mean i've thought a million times now i know why so many businesses fail within the first year yeah because it takes challenging every single thought that comes up about how hard it is and every you know it's either if I have the science experiment attitude, which is a growth mindset, like this didn't work, what's next, then it's easy. It's, mm -hmm. but if I have the fixed mindset of this should be working, why isn't it working? Then it's really hard. But the part you said about believing, I think that that's really important to talk about too, that mindset, it is just a belief. Like, we have so many beliefs that we don't even realize that we have. Like I wasn't conscious that I was thinking these things that I, it was just part of the way the world was to me. I didn't know that it was a belief that I could change or question. And so just even watching this video and hearing this, if you think about creating that awareness and asking yourself, you know, if, over the next day or week, where you have a fixed mindset and how you could have more of a growth mindset. I think it opens up the chance to change that belief for people so that they can create that growth mindset. Like it's just a belief. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have people that I talk to all the time with potential clients like, well, how do I change it? If you're telling me the beliefs and my thoughts are what's creating the results of my life, Kim, then how do I change it? And it's like, well, it's not a pill, right? It's like being a gym owner. How do I lose weight? Well, you're not going to do it in four days, right? Like you spent years eating the way you have to gain these 50 pounds. You spent years creating evidence for this belief that you're not even aware of. And I think that that's why so many of us that are coaches believe so strongly in coaching. And for me, it's, I never see my own beliefs until I have a book that challenges it, mm -hmm. or I have a coach that questions it because right. it, it's so it's a part of the fabric of my being. Yeah. It, it's like when you have like moles, like you don't even notice them. They're just part of you. That's what beliefs are for me. I don't notice them. They're just part of me until I have, again, books, podcasts that will challenge it or a coach to point it out. And I think that that's, for me, why coaching is invaluable. I won't see them until you call me on them. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When it's so, 
it's like, if you don't know that it's there, then you don't know that it's there. And it's, and if it hasn't been a real problem in life, you know, I think for most people, it's not that big of a problem until you get to like what we're just taught in life. You go to school and you get good grades and then you go to college and you graduate and then you go get a job and then you get married and then you buy a house and then you have kids and then what? Yeah. Right? Like if you don't have that growth mindset, then what? That's when people start feeling really empty and start wondering like, what's wrong? What else, you know, should I be doing in life? But we haven't been instructed past that point. Then that's mm -hmm. like, that's where the book ends and the happily ever after happens. Mm -hmm. But what really is, that's where the feeling of something missing in your life sets in. And that's where, why I was looking for something. One of the reasons I was looking for something when I found coaching was because I didn't know what to do next. And yeah. I needed to open up to, oh, like there's so many more things I could be doing with my life still. Mm -hmm. I could learn so many more things that I could change who I was as a person, that I could start this journey of being really you know, you hear like a leopard can't change its spots. Yeah. Which is, that. yes, it totally is. It's an injustice to living a, an unsatisfying life. Mm -hmm. Like that's what that is. It's a sentence to an unsatisfying life where yeah. you're stuck. Absolutely. And I'm trying to get, like go back in history while you're talking really quickly and think like, where did this fixed mindset come from I, I mean I don't know I'd have to research that but my inclination is like and it it probably came from a a government system if we tell the people that they're only capable right then they'll only be that capable Weren't you reading a book about like why people, I think you mentioned it on your podcast last week, like why some people were so successful. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. No um, it's, it's Napoleon Hill's book. Uh, I, let me, I can't remember the name of it. It's Napoleon. It's super like he wrote it in like 1920s or something. Yeah. Is yeah. it the Think and Grow Rich one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's it. And what does he say that does he talk about mindset? I mean, I haven't finished the book yet, but that's all he talks about. Like, um, I don't, have you read the book? Uh, uh, I've heard about it, but I haven't read it. No. Um, I don't know. My brain's just not fully online yet. What is he was like Carnegie, not Carnegie. Who's the guy that owned the steel companies? He's one of the rich families. It's not a Carnegie. Oh, I, I, don't know. It I thought it was Carnegie. It may be. So he's the one that challenged Napoleon to write the book. He was like, hey, write this book for me. And so Napoleon spent 20 years doing research to write this book. And he studied like um, Henry Ford and was in close contact with this guy. And he found that it was their thoughts, like their thoughts they believed that they could they were so committed to their belief of what they could create that they just kept with it and did not stop even though it took years and decades like it took him 20 years to write that book i might have quit yeah <laughs> but he just believed in it so much that he thought like that he just believed in it so i mean that, like that goes to and they kept failing, right? But they believed so solidly in it that it didn't matter. So, I mean, yeah, it's just that growth, I guess. That's what the growth mindset. I don't know. I don't know about the history. I, he hasn't dove into like, because his whole thing is like your thoughts create it. So it doesn't matter where you come from or your, like Henry Ford dropped out of the sixth grade. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So it just goes back to the think, feel, act cycle. So whatever we think is going to, you know, release the chemicals that create the feeling in our body. And then we're going to act based on that feeling 
And those actions that we take are going to determine the results that we get. So if we are continuing to think growth mindset, you know, thoughts that help us keep moving forward, then we're going to create the results that we want. But if our thoughts are just that we can't, or it just isn't going to work, then that's the result we're going to create. Like it really is true. I mean, I watch it with myself all the time. (laughs) I've shared on my podcast, different things where like, you know, where I had came into this year with one set of beliefs, you know, change in my health, totally different set of beliefs started creating a whole new future for myself. And then was like, thank God I knew what I was doing. So I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. I don't want that future. Let me see how I can go back to these original thoughts that were creating the kind of future that I wanted. And maybe I just need a few adjustments instead of just throwing everything out. Yeah. Yeah. I still struggle with that. Honestly, like I was doing a belief plan, which one of my coaches, Stacy talks about, and she's talking about like from your million dollar self, she just goes to her million dollar self and that person then creates the belief plan. I still have a very hard time access, accessing that future self and what her thoughts are to create the beliefs that I need to believe to get to her. It feels so meta at this point. Yeah, for me, I've been trying to figure that out too. And I have to like actively connect with that person every single day. Like, what does that look like? It's so I've just been focusing on like six things that I want in my life. Mm -hmm. and you know, I've tried to do this before and then I get distracted and it turns into 20 things. So I'm like six things because 20 things is too many to focus on at once. And so, and I just spend time, like while I'm walking every day, at least 30 minutes, sometime while I'm driving, you know, I might spend a couple hours a day that I would have wasted doing other things where I'm just thinking about it and visualizing it and literally talking to myself about it. Like, as if it's already happened. And like the more I talk about it to myself and the more I connect with it, the more it grows and becomes like it's I'm living in it and it gets more detailed and I can see it more. But the first, I've been doing it for a couple of weeks now, the first like week or so, it was just awkward. I'm like, oh, I'm just talking about this to myself and it feels weird, but I'm going to keep doing it, you know, yeah. but now I'm really connecting with it and expanding it. And so um, it's like opening up how it could possibly all happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because your beliefs are changing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then my brain starts seeing things happening in my life and saying, oh, hey, this is, that's coming true already. And so the more I connect with that, the more I start, my brain is looking for evidence, which it is meant to do. It's supposed to look for evidence of, it's like when you buy a new car and you see that car everywhere, it's like whatever you're focused on, you're going to see that everywhere. And so because I'm focusing on this every day, I'm starting to see that it's possible. Now there's this phase of cognitive dissonance where I want to see doom and gloom too sometimes still, yeah. but I'm able to pull myself out of it easier because I'm put, spending so much time in the process of creating what I want. Good stuff. <laughs> and that's how a belief is created. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I have anything else to add to this one, do you? Nope, I'm good. I think it's good just to think about like, you know, how we have a fixed or growth mindset and challenge that belief because all it is is a belief and it can be changed. Yeah. Yeah. And get some help to find your beliefs. Yes. Whether that's engaging in podcast books, um, coaching, like it's just like a freckle that you don't even notice anymore. Like yeah. You've got to have some outside sources to help you start seeing like that. This doesn't serve me. And it's, it's not real. It's a yes. belief I created. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. All, All right. right friends. Thanks. See you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.